So today, I feel like we have one amazing video. But first off, I need to get clothes changed. Much better. Let's get to the video. I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. y'all are doing amazing with this virus and everything and not being able to travel it's hard to make travel videos or adventure videos so I've just been like racking my brain like what things have I researched what would I want to know about when I'm gonna get ready to travel in a fifth wheel or a camper or a motorhome I made a list a bullet points so I can keep on track because I can get kind of distracted sometimes. Now everyone talks about what you need to get started camping but they usually talk about all the outside stuff like the sewer hoses and all that but you rarely have anybody that does a video about the inside and what you would need or what you think you need. Because when we bought our camper, you spend 50 or 60,000 on a camper and then there's nothing in it. It is completely empty on the inside. It has some furniture, but that's it. There's no organization. There's no plates. There's no pots. There's no pans. It's like buying a new house and having to completely furnish it. Now, the thing that I wish I had known and people told me don't go out the next day and try to buy everything. I probably spent, I, I'm exaggerating, I'm sure, but I probably spent like seven, eight thousand dollars You think about it. New sheets, new towels, new plates, new silverware, new cooking utensils, new pots, new pans, cups. I mean, like, there's so much stuff that you feel like you need to run out and go buy. Now, what I wish I had done is I wish I had just bought paper plates, plastic forks, and cups. Then maybe find some on sale, go to yard sales, find stuff, go to thrift stores, find things, because it doesn't have to be new. You're just going to use it in your camper. And for most people, you're talking using it maybe once a month. Now, I want to talk about the things you must have. Like, there is no ifs, ands, or buts. These are things that I feel like you have to have to go camping the first time on the inside. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about on the inside. RV toilet paper. You got to have RV toilet paper. You do not want to put regular house toilet paper down your toilet in your RV you will have a clogged up mess at some point. It doesn't degrade and buy, it doesn't degrade the same. So you definitely need to go buy RV toilet paper. Toilet paper that is made for the RV. You can order it online, they have it at Walmart, and they have it in Walmart, but not in the toilet paper section, but in the RV section. And probably right now, they probably don't have any because I've seen people saying, they're grabbing RV toilet paper for their house. You know, since we're cleaning all the shelves of toilet paper. The next thing, they make chemicals that you put down your toilet that helps your septic tank smell better or not. It's not a septic tank. I'm thinking like a house. I guess it is still a septic tank. <laughs> but your black water tanks in your RV, that it helps, it makes them stay fresh smelling. It helps with the biodegrading of the stuff that goes down your toilet. Thank oh, you, dear. You're welcome. All right. Bye. bye. Still working. Another thing that I feel before you go camping that you need on the inside is a first aid kit. They sell some nice little first aid kits. You just never know what's going to get cut. You you're never know what's going to get cut. Who's going to get cut? <laughs> 
you know, kids, they're going to fall, they're going to get scrapes, they're going to get bruises. So I would suggest to go buy a small first aid kit. I would really think you would want like a bigger one, but if all you can find is a little one, that is great because that's all we have is just a small one. It just has your basic stuff in it. Another thing is a bucket for the sink. This is something that nobody's ever, if you've never RV'd before, you wouldn't, you think a bucket for my sink? I have a sink. Why do I want to put a bucket in it? If you are camping and you do not have full hookups and you have stuff to wash in your sink, you want to put a bucket in your sink. And it's not really a bucket, it's kind of like a tub. <laughs> but you're going to want to put the tub in your sink so that way whenever you run water it doesn't go straight down and into your tank, your gray tank. That way when your bucket gets full of water you just take it outside and dump it. It's just gray water. Um, you're just washing your hands or washing your dishes or whatever, but you don't want all that water that's unnecessary go down your sink into your gray tanks and fill them up and you can't go dump. Now, like I said in the beginning, I would just, for the start out, I would just grab paper plates, plastic forks and cups and paper towels. That way you would just have those things, they're disposable. You're not going to use a ton of it and you don't want to have to go out and spend all that money to start with because there's so many other things that you have to buy when you buy a camper. And it just can get so expensive and overwhelming. Another thing is tension rods. To go in your cabinets, I feel like these are a must. I have them all inside my cabinets. They help keep like our coffee pot from flipping out while we're driving down the road. It's just an extra level of security to have tension rods and I have them almost in all our cabinets to help hold stuff back so it doesn't come out. Another thing I think is a must is museum putty. I had never heard of this until I saw it on a, I think I saw it on like one of the RV Facebook pages. Museum putty to put your stuff down all my lamps are put down with museum putty. We drive down the road, we get where we're going, and they're still there, and I don't have to store them, and I don't have to put them up, and I have them on more than just my lamps. I've got like a little thing on my desk that I have. I've got like a little decorative figure up in the bedroom. I have it on our clock in our bedroom. You can put it on anything that you're not going to move around, and it sticks, and it doesn't ruin whatever you're stuck it to. Now, you don't have to put anything on your walls to start with, but when you start doing that, they make command strip Velcro. That stuff holding up picture frames is great. Now I use it in conjunction with the museum putty. I've learned that the Velcro strip sometimes with the humidity change will let go of your wall. I know that from experience. But I'll put in a couple of pieces of the museum putty behind the picture and do the Velcro and I've seemed like I haven't had a problem with any of them falling off since I started doing that. But I'll just put like a little dime size of museum putty a couple of spots and then put the Velcro on there and push it on the wall and they don't fall off. Also, in the camper for all your cabinets, I would suggest going ahead and grabbing baskets. We have like a ton of them and they don't, a lot of them don't have anything in it, but you can go to the dollar tree and get baskets and do all of them. I found some in my pantry that I got from the Dollar General but they were only a dollar and they have like a little handle on them and they hook in the pantry so well to keep them from sliding around. Another thing that I suggest that's a must is for your freezer go to the Dollar Tree and buy their like little cutting mats. They're clear plastic and put them up in the back of your freezer so that when after you keep your freezer for a while it does not auto defrost so you end up having to defrost it well there's a couple of ways to do it one open up the doors and just let it sit open forever until it melts or two and this one I got from the getaway couple she had done a video on it which I will link it they take those plastic mats and put them in the back of their freezer so when it's time to clean out the freezer, they just take everything out. You pull the, it, the ice just falls off the mats. You throw it away. 
and you're all done. Literally like five minutes. That is such a lifesaver. Another thing that you will need is a garbage can, for sure. Because you need to throw away your garbage. So that's something that you really need to have before you go camping. Also, on the inside, I like to get a screwdriver that I keep in here. Bill has his stuff outside, but I keep one in here, and they make one that's just like changeable, that it make, works for Phillips and Flathead, but you can just keep it in your drawer. I know that this is something that you can keep on the outside, but I like to keep on the inside, is like a headlamp or a flashlight, because you never know you may be inside at night and you need a flashlight real quick and it's outside. So I would think you need that outside, but I would want one on the inside as well. Also, a tip. When you do go buy your plates, don't go buy glass plates. Try to find plastic or those Corian. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, you can just make sure you don't buy breakable stuff. I only have two coffee cups that are glass and I have them wedged in together so that when we ride down the road, they won't break. Because in a camper, it moves a lot and things will break. Another thing, when you are buying stuff, try to get things that stack so or collapse. You want to make sure you buy things that are stackable or collapsible to maximize your space in a camper. Now, there was so many things that I like ran to buy. Like literally, I have to say, <laughs> I went like literally the first week after we bought our camper and bought everything. I have towels that match for my camper. I have plates that match my camper. I got pots and pans and everything. But don't stress over that let's just you really need to just start going camping and start making a list of things that you think okay this is what i need this time so we'll do that next time so i would just start really making a list now cooking stuff you can move stuff from your house and take it with you for the first few times you don't have to have all of that stuff to start with listen to me really well because I thought that I did. I thought, oh, I don't want to have to move it from the house to here. But if you're only going once a month, once every few months, to start with, because it is so expensive, just move stuff from your house that you use into your camper when you go on your trips and then take it back. And just do that for the first few times until you can find something on sale or you can find it at a yard sale or something. That's my suggestion, and I so wish someone had told me that because, again, you're buying it new, you think, I gotta have all this stuff. You don't. You just need to go camping and have fun. That's what camping is about. I do wanna talk about a couple of things that you don't have to have but are nice to have. We have, we installed a Wee Boost, and <laughs> I know they're expensive, but there's been a couple of times that we've been camping and we would not have had service on our phone. But when we put the, turn the Wee Boost on, we at least have a bar or two. And I did a review on it and I'll link that video about it. Another thing, and this one's not that expensive, we have the Rio Link wireless camera. It's just a small little camera wireless that sets up in our camper. And we watch the dogs through it. And you can hook on, you gotta make sure you have Wi-Fi in the RV park, or if you have a hotspot in your camper, you can use that. But you gotta have Wi-Fi service. But we love having it because we can see whether or not that the power is on to our camper, if the dogs are okay. But those are a couple of things that I feel like are a must have for us, may not be a must have for you, but me being a realtor, the Wee Boost, I have to have service if we're camping. And it has saved us quite a few times. And it works great. If you're just buying your first camper and you're getting ready to go camping and with all this craziness hadn't been able to, not long. It sounds like we may be getting to go again. Congratulations on your new camper if you just bought one. Or if you're just trying to get some new ideas on the camper that you already have. 
I hope this video helps you get your camper ready for camping if you just bought it. Hey, also, we made it to 300 subscribers. I'm so excited. I love it seeing our subscribers grow. So I would love for you to subscribe and be part of our family and go with us on our adventures when we can start back again. Please like and subscribe. It helps my well-being with you subscribing. <laughs> I say that because you just get so excited when you see subscribers. And when I started this channel, that was not what this was about. And it's still not what it's about, but it still makes you feel good. Please like and subscribe. Till next time.